shared that with the family and with the investigators who had, who had um, put in hours, uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of flight time in a particular area in um, Sedona, Arizona. Right, I'm and familiar with Sedona. So we, um, they, they looked and looked and looked. Well, later on I found out that the reason that she didn't want to, because we worked the case again about a year later looking to see if there was any new energy that we could feel from it, was that she didn't want her father to find her, and her father was on every single one of the of the flights. Oh, wow. For her. Wow. And a year later, so this <coughs> was two years after she went missing, um, some hikers found her. And, of course, by that time, there would be no, nothing that would um, be as traumatizing to see for a father, so then she could be found. And, so she um, was being protective of her father. Right. She didn't want oh, him to wow. find her that way because she was, you know, she'd been in a plane crash. Yeah. Um, the plane had been on fire. Um, it was down in a very deep, deep um, area that really you could barely even get to to walk. Um, and and in, in an area that was very close to where I think 25 of the psychics out of 95 had within a mile radius of that particular area, but it was so difficult to find and you couldn't see the plane from the from the air, and we all said that. We all knew you couldn't see the plane from the air, but, you know, we're, we're trying to, to do our job and, and trying to help them locate her also with her not helping. <laughs> Throwing blocks up for you. Kind of, yeah. Well, you know, we, we see this. There's a, What's the show on, t, on cable? I think it's Psychic Detectives. Well, and they kind of give you the idea that, you know, that it's accepted, but how, how, how do the police departments really take to the psychic uh, aspect of all this? Are they receptive? You know, it's challenging because yeah. we don't always know. Some police departments, we've had some that have just been open-armed, like, here, you know, we've got this case, we don't know what to do, they come to us right away, and then we get some, some more activity because we get it right away. Most of the people that come to us come a year and a half, two years, 20 years later. Um, but once we turn in our police report and we hand it off to the police department, it's really out of our hands. So we don't always know if they followed up on the leads right. that we gave um, and until and, and or unless the body's found. So I, I will say that I definitely think the energy is changing, and I think that there is more openness with it. But there are certainly some that are, are, are going to be closed-minded to it, and um, I'm skeptical, and, you know... I, that doesn't really bother me. I don't care if they're skeptical. I sure. just say, you know what, be skeptical, but give us the opportunity. If you don't have any leads anyway, then who cares? What's going to hurt you? Sure, why not Why not check it out? Hey, by the way, have you met any psychic detectives? Um, well, They we must be pretty a, intuitive if they're really good, I would think. Well, we have one gal that's in our group <coughs> that is psychic, and she's also a private investigator. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, that's like the perfect combination. And the thing that I find interesting with her is, you know, for me, it's challenging to think like a cop. It's not my nature. Um, right, I'm absolutely. Much more sensitive and quiet and gentle and well, not quiet, but gentle. And, <coughs> yeah, um, I wouldn't say you were quiet. So no, not one. quiet. No. Um, and then, and, and, and for her, she's got the psychic aspect, and then she's got the, 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 the investigative part that's looking for all that. So right. That's fascinating. That's got to be quite a combination. Now, I, she must be pretty interesting just to be around. I would say. It, it is. She's really, um, she's really dynamic, and, and and she gets the hit, and then she knows how to follow it. So the the book itself is on. Is it on your website? Yeah, it is. What give give our audience that website, and Tom um, will, Tom will put it up in the name. chat. So Sunny Don Johnson with a T dot com. com. And um, the book is called Find Me, and. It is um, really kind of a how-to book. So there's 13 of us that wrote several different chapters in the book on the different ways that we use our gifts to be able to work the cases. So there's a remote viewer, there's a forensic astrologer, there's um, using um, uh, pendulums and, um, and, and cards and meditation. And so it gives a variety of different ways that really, for a lot of people, they find fascinating as to how it works. And, you know, we're just all everyday people, and I think a lot of times people think, you know, you have to have these special gifts. Well, everyone has a special gift. It's just that we've either they've, you know, forced us to become more aware of them because they're always in front of our face, yeah. or we've chosen to, to nurture them and to support them and to allow them to grow. But we're all just everyday people like everyone else. So 
um, I think that that book gives a lot of opportunity for people to 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 develop some of their own natural gifts. So, by the way, I wanted to let our audience know that uh, that you have a really uh, uh, a lot of videos up on YouTube on your YouTube channel that are will be especially helpful for folks. So they they ought to do it. They definitely want to do a search for you on on YouTube. If you have any questions for uh, Sunny Tom, we'll take them either by phone, uh, and uh, or. And he's going to put that in the, the phone number in the chat room, or you can you know throw the question into the chat room, and uh, and we'll sure uh, uh, pose the question to uh, Sonny. Uh, Sonny, let's go back to the mediumship for just a little bit, and, and tell us what that. I mean, you know, there's so many when when you talk about me mediumship, are we talking about channeling or because they're kind of like various aspects of mediumship, aren't they? Well, well, there are. Um, you know, for me, I. I do a little bit of all of it. So um, there are times when it, it is just direct channeling. I'm getting direct messages right from, from spirit, um, and they're telling me specific you know, information, specific things. Other times, um, it's more impressions in my mind. Um, yes. There's other times where I feel it. A lot of times when I do mediumship, I feel the way that the people pass in my body. Um, really? And, and that's actually was what was so challenging for me as, as a younger person is I've always felt people's emotions, people's pain, yeah, me physical too. pain as well. And right. so it, it was scary for me when I first started having that happen because I didn't want to feel everybody's pain and I didn't know how to separate from it and how to be able to observe it. And through many years of, of trial and error and experience, I, I really found a way that there are times when absolutely I still feel the energy and I still feel the pressure. Or I'll feel the way someone um, passed, but it isn't. It doesn't stay with me. It's almost like it's just a validation so that I can share it with the person, with the client. And, and then as soon as, um, as soon as I acknowledge it, then it releases out of my body, and I don't feel it as pain. So, like I just saw a gal last week whose who's, um, son had been murdered, and. Um, immediately I felt the pressure in the back of my head and pressure in my chest, and he was shot in both of those places. Wow. And, um, and I even grabbed, you know, both places at the same time, and she, she was shocked, and she said, well, you know, are, are you okay? Are you in pain? I, I, I didn't feel pain, but I feel the pressure, and it's, it's right. very noticeable, but, but not uncomfortable, so, so to speak. So do you, but do if I carried it, it would be uncomfortable. So do you channel an entity? You know, there's there are a lot of uh, people out there who channel entities, or do you, I mean, you're not following a single entity? Uh, no. You, no. No, I just, I, I, I <coughs> channel whoever it is that right. um, the, the, the person wants to connect with and or whoever comes through, but I don't have a particular, you know, like Esther, and, uh, Esther Hicks that channels just Abraham. And right. I, no, I don't do that. Um, are, are, I've, I've done some channeling at times similar to that um i'm not real comfortable with giving complete control of my huh. body away i and just so, totally understand that um i've i've tried it a few times and um although i'm an ex-control freak um i still like to have a little more than that so. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're an ex-control freak uh, yes. yeah of course yes. we're all controllers to a certain point are you familiar right. with uh jay-z knight and ramtha um, I, I'm slightly familiar, a little bit. I've seen some interviews and, and, and one of that one of those shows with her. Well, actually, Jay Z Knight was was the uh, force behind the secret. Oh, okay. She's the one who brought the the documentary out and oh. and so forth. But you know, I went back and this must have been like eighty five or eighty six, and Ramtha was pretty popular. And I was living in San Diego, and I was dating a woman who had a church and was a pastor of a metaphysical church, and she was real into it, and I. You know, I, I listened to it and went to a lot of the videos that they were showing, and I was, it was really, really impressive until one evening I was watching the video and Ramtha said that his main purpose was to become more famous than the most famous rock uh, star. Oh. And that was like, I mean, what I heard was ego, and uh -huh. which to me is the opposite of, uh, of a spiritual path, and I just kind of dropped that whole thing at that point. Right. You know, that and that... 
that's really one of the other things that I have a bit of a problem with. When you hear Esther Hicks stuff, you, you know, the information is so, it's all pretty, it's all good stuff. But you, you just never know, you know, like what entity you're really involved with. Well, I, I, I guess the way that I look at um, all of these kind of teachings is I take what resonates with me and what feels good to me, what feels like it's in alignment for me at that particular time in my life. And then, um, and then the rest of it I release. And there's times where, you know, I've listened to something and I've been, I mean, I remember when I read, you know, You Can Heal Your Life when I was 19 years old. And, it, and in that book, Louise Hay said, um, you pick your parents. And I'm like, hell no. No, no way you I know, pick these no people. Way. Yeah. And then, you know, two years later after, you know, I have this son and he's growing up and I'm thinking, oh yeah, that is true. So, you know, as, as we grow and evolve, things that maybe we come into contact with at one time don't feel in alignment for us and, and as our vibration changes then, then we do change so I always take the information that feels good to me and feels and not necessarily always feels good but it just feels in alignment as truth for me and I know I, I really believe within myself that I know my truth and my, my head might talk me out of it sometimes but I really know that within my heart that's, that's exactly how I've approached this whole thing and, and and the the reality is, like you said, it at some point I I couldn't you know I couldn't take it in, but somewhere later I was able to. But that brings to mind the the particular.